Will you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we pause to ask for your spirit to inspire and instruct us. May you open our eyes that we might see. May you open our ears so that we might hear what you are saying to us this day. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. From 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. May the God of peace himself cause you to be completely dedicated to him. And may your spirit, soul, and body be kept intact and blameless at our Lord Jesus Christ's coming. For the one who is calling you is faithful. The word of God for the people of God. When I began my doctoral studies, the very first assignment was to write a spiritual autobiography. The autobiography needed to be at least 15 pages long and include topics like family history, a review of family dynamics, significant and formative events that shaped my life, and a reflection about how I came to faith and the spiritual growth disciplines that I had developed and practiced. I needed to also write about each church that I had served and the lessons that I had learned from those churches. I needed to write about what I understood to be my gifts and graces for ministry, and then to identify the goals that I hoped to accomplish during the three to five year doctoral journey. The seminary faculty had developed a value for telling and listening to stories. They believed that within each student's story was the basis for their doctoral project as well as the goals and objectives of every learning unit. The first three-week seminar was spent with my doctoral committee who literally took apart my story. They probed and they prodded. They ask insightful, albeit sometimes irritating, questions that both invited and pushed me to go deeper in my self-awareness and self-understanding than I had ever done before. It was uncomfortable. And at the same time, it was rather exciting. Because of their experience and their skills, the faculty dissected my history and values and goals and dreams and then prayerfully led me to examine myself. And then they began helping me to put the pieces back together again. Four of the eight students actually left the program by the end of the three-week session. You see, rehearsing and growing to understand our personal stories is sometimes difficult, sometimes painful. Dr. Stanley Rock, an incredibly insightful psychologist and pastoral counselor, kept pressing me to include music in my doctoral studies. Initially, I argued with Stan, rather emphatically. 
If I would have wanted to study music for my doctorate, I claimed, I would have gone to the conservatory, not the seminary. I'm here to further develop my pastoral skills, not my musical skills. Ah, but music is a major theme in your life story, responded Stan. You will not be whole, nor will your doctoral journey accomplish the goals that you hope to achieve until you find a way to embrace that part of who you are and make music a fundamental part of your pastoral ministry. His wise counsel became the catalyst that I needed in developing a passion for Wesleyan hymnody. I studied and wrote extensively about the evolution of the United Methodist Church and the role that music has played in that evolution. Over time, I also learned to understand that a pastor is very much like a conductor in the way that they invite and they teach and they inspire and motivate the ensemble called the congregation. Just like a skillful orchestra or band or chorus, an effective congregation learns to harmoniously invest and share their gifts with others in order to make a greater difference in the world. That's just a snippet of my story. But we all have stories, don't we? Every single person in this room has a story. Most of us like to tell our story, and we like to listen to stories. As people called Christian, we believe that the Bible is not only God's Word, but that God's Word is a collection of magnificent stories. It's reading or hearing the stories of faith that touch us deeply as we listen to them, as we read them, as we begin to delve into the story of Scripture, or we hear the story of someone that we know and love, God comes alive within us. Faith is born or deepened all from story. One of the stories that I wrote about in my spiritual autobiography actually occurred while I was sitting in this sanctuary in the fall of 1981. I had already completed one stent of seminary and was completing a second master's degree, but that time, at that time, it was in choral conducting from Michigan State University. It was my professional goal to teach choral music at either the college or seminary level. That was my passion. Yet while I was in graduate school, Superintendent Larry Taylor, on behalf of Bishop Ammons, offered me an opportunity to be the pastor of two little churches outside of Lansing while I was a student. It was a wonderful three years. The churches grew, so did I. I was getting close to finishing my degree. I started applying to music positions all over the country. One night, a neighboring pastor called me and asked me to go with him to a preaching mission that was being held in Grand Rapids First United Methodist Church. He said all of the United Methodist pastors had been invited and encouraged to attend, and he wanted me to go with him. We sat about halfway back. 
right on this aisle. I was mesmerized by the grandeur of this church. I was impressed by the organ and the organist. I was impressed by the guest soloist who came with the speaker. I don't remember who the preacher was, but when he began reading from Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, those two verses that I read to you just a moment ago, I heard phrases that ministered to me. May the God of peace cause you to be completely dedicated to God, the one who is calling you is faithful. Tears began to flow. I didn't know why. All during the sermon, my mind kept rehearsing those two phrases, completely dedicated to God. Well, I was a pastor, but I wasn't completely dedicated. I wanted what I wanted. That night, I knew that God was calling me to walk a different path than I had wanted or planned for. And when we sang the final hymn, I Surrender All, I finally meant it. Think of it, in this church building, sitting about halfway back, I gave up my will and opened myself to live in God's will. And think of it, here I am, the pastor of this church where my life changed. What a remarkable adventure it has been. You see, in my faith story, there's a connection with a place, this place, a scripture that reoriented my life, a hymn that called me to a deeper commitment, and a friend who was willing to extend an invitation. I would imagine if you go back in your story, you might remember some stories too. Maybe a Bible story or maybe a church story or maybe it was a friend who invited you to go to church. We all have a story. For you see, I believe that it is in rehearsing our stories that we meet God that we grow in God's grace and we build Christian community. Thanks be to God for the marvelous stories of faith, hope, and love that touch us and invite us to a relationship with God and with God's people. Amen.